Hi, it's Arlie. I've been trying to figure out how to do this video. And um, because I kind of want you to see what my travel bag looks like packed, and then I'm gonna kind of unpack it. So figuring out the camera angle has been annoying. So uh, I decided on this overhead one. Let's see how this goes. So this is a tote from Northern or Harbor Freight. And it was about, I think it was like $15. So I got two of them. One of them I use for gardening. I love it. It's a little heavy to carry for any distance. So I also bring a tote bag that fits this whole bag. And it has uh, shoulder handles if needed. But uh, it's just a great size. If I carry this and a milk crate, um, it's really everything I need. So I'm gonna put it to the side and unpack it. The first thing is two large Ziploc bags. And I like the Ziploc bags because you know once they get too tattered, I throw them away. One is so that I can keep my palette. You know, if I need to quickly fold up my palette and move, if it starts raining or mosquitoes have uh, discovered me, um, I might have to move quickly. So if there's any drips or water in here, uh, I just throw it in here and it just keeps it from um, getting on anything else. And then I guess I must have thrown in some candy um, last time I went out painting. Um, this is gouache, which is kind of like opaque watercolor and um, it reactivates with water. So I also have a mister, which I will show you in a minute. Um, and I keep the pure colors in the in the wells and then I mix down here and I keep blobs of white. The problem with um, reactivating gouache is it's not as creamy. It's a little more granular when you re-wet it. So I, um, I kind of use these for starters. I think last time I cleaned this was in March. So at some point I'll get tired of this muddy look and, and clean it out. But for now I just like, you know, I'll get this wet and if it's too grainy and I can't quite get it creamy again, I might put another blob of this orangey red in here. So, and then this is where I keep my darks, this is where I keep my yellow. So there is, there is some method to the madness. This is supposed to be held like this, but I end up just holding it like this. The second thing is paper. Um, when you're out plein air painting, sometimes it might rain or you might spill your coffee or whatever. You never know what happens in the car also. Could, any number of things could happen. So I'll keep a book in this bag, whatever journal I'm working in. And if I'm not working in a journal, then a board that would fit in the bag and some other extra pieces of paper. So this, this is sort of my paper bag. This is my must stay dry bag. And then, uh, Sometimes I keep pencils and, and extra little doodads in here in my Blue Q. So check out the Blue Q website. They have an outlet for factory seconds and stuff. And uh, it's a great way to stock up on these storage bags. I don't know what I was carrying in here. It might have been snacks. Cause, you know, you're painting for two hours, you get snacky. Um... This is colored pencils. I'm going to show you a photo of how I keep my colored pencils here at home. And usually what I do is sort of grab a subset of the colors, but I threw these in just to show you how they fit in here. One, one of the ways I like to work is I set this up like this somewhere so that I can kind of see into it and pull them out. And usually it's about half full. So it would be up to here and then I would zip down so that I could just sort of reach in and grab the color. And um, that's pencils. These are great for colored pencils. And I have another one for paints. So if I'm, uh, if I know I'm going to know I'm going to be carrying my bag for a long distance, I will only bring just the very li most limited palette, which for me is a a warm blue and a cool blue, a warm red and a cool red, a warm yellow and a cool yellow and white so that's seven and then sometimes i'll bring just a couple more like if i know i'm going somewhere with a lot of leaves and green i might bring a couple of greens or a couple of different yellows but if i know i'm just going right from the car to my like just a couple of feet or a short walk i'll bring all of you know everything 
or a lot. So this, I just brought the, all that I had of this brand and then a couple of metallic Arteza. So this is Windsor & Newton Designer Squash. And also, um, if you find that you're low in a supply, those are the best ones to pack because you, you know you can use up the rest of it and throw it away. So that's the way I am with um, packing for trips too. Like toothpaste, I try to leave a little bit of toothpaste. When I'm close to the end of my toothpaste, I save that to go into my travel thing because then I know I can throw it away at the hotel. So, And inside, always, 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 lots of paper towels. And you need to be able to grab a paper towel quickly for all the normal reasons, but also if you're painting and you get a drip, you can quickly grab it uh, grab that drip and stop it if you want to, um, if you have this nearby, but if you have to dig for it, um, that you're going to have a drip on your painting. And then this, I, my, my white bandanas are in the wash, but I always carry a bandana for whatever reason, for all the normal reasons you would need a bandana, but to cover your painting while you're doing something else, to catch drips, to wipe sweat, whatever. But bandanas are the perfect thing. They're the perfect size. You can use them to tie things together. Um, you know, use it as a headband, a belt. It's just the best. So I'm a, I, when I used to do, it seems like I don't have any friends who are pregnant anymore because I'm old. Um, my baby shower gift was always wrapped in bandanas because they're just the greatest thing. So these are Nature's Way bottles. I have two of them. I use these for my water. I keep a larger jug of water in the car, which I don't know where it is. Oh, it's over there in my painting. So like a big milk jug of water in the car. And then I, I fill it up about a half to two thirds. I fill these up a half to two thirds full. And I will paint with one. Usually I work big brush to small brush. So, and then usually um, I will use this with the big brush, use one of them with the big brush. And then once this gets really dirty, I'll close this and go switch to smaller brushes for detail and switch to clean water. So I'll, I'll use one up and then I'll go to the other one. Lots and lots and lots of clips. Just so many clips, just like bandanas. You just, you, they're so useful for so many things, especially if it's just the tiniest bit windy or very windy. So let me go through the pockets and put all these back. So this is like my car. If I'm going by car and I don't have to go very far, bag. It's not, not lightweight, but anyway, this is, I just keep this packed all summer. Let's go through the side pockets. There's nothing in this pocket. Good place for a granola bar. These are my water brushes. This was the first one I've ever used recently, and I was like, oh my God, how come I've never done this before? So I immediately bought three more. This was a set of three different sizes. And I'm just gonna always keep them in my travel tote in case I use them at home. And then I, if I do decide to take a smaller watercolor kit, I will just take one or two of them with me. But this is, since I only have four, I don't wanna keep unloading them all the time. So this is their permanent home. And when I come home with my smaller kit, I will unpack the kit and put it back in here. This, I tend to be disorganized and don't think straight the morning that I'm leaving to go paint or draw. So I like to kind of have a, a way of always doing things so that I can just follow that way. So um, this is a black wing pencil. I like these, it's like, it's very, very dark. This, uh, what I discovered in one of my um, painting classes is you can draw with a pencil and then if you get a brush, kind of a, kind of a firm brush, you can turn it into a graphite wash. Um, so that's kind of cool. If you know, if there's enough sort of loose graphite on the page, you can brush into it and get yourself some nice um, shading going. That's a fun thing to do. Um, oh, and these are cool because you can pull the eraser out. 
I bought a little box of these. I was so curious. It's not amazing, but it's fun to, fun to try new stuff. Um, of course, a regular old pencil. And then mechanical pencil. And um, I like these for watercolor. So you can really gently kind of sketch out what you plan to draw. And I love these, you know, back to school sets. I think this is a Valentine's set. These are great. I don't ever use the eraser. I use regular eraser, but these are great because you can pop it out and search for a sharper one or a duller one if that's what you want. So these are great. Mechanical pencil. Well, I don't know if that this would be a pop-up mechanical or I don't know if that has a different name. Okay, so the my sort of sunblock skincare section. Um, I don't use this anymore because it doesn't have um, zinc and titanium oxide. Is that right in it? So this is sort of like, I don't want to throw it away, but it's not what my dermatologist recommends. So this is like my backup emergency sunblock. So it goes in my travel bag. And then I, of course, have I'm, I'm so worried that I won't have chapstick that I pack too much chapstick. This is a glassine bag. It could be a little Ziploc bag. I, for some reason, always keep, I always think of erasers and pencil sharpeners together. So I tend to store them that way. You really want to try to keep your erasers separate from everything so that they stay clean. Bug spray, way useful. I've used this more than I can count. It really, if you're being attacked by bugs and you're trying to draw or paint, it's just miserable. Scissors, needle nose pliers. Let me show you why needle nose pliers. Ta-da. That's it. That's all I use it for. So you don't kill your hands trying to, your fingers trying to open things. Scissors, and then I um, have a travel kit to show you with smaller scissors. And then all these brushes. A couple different things to say about brushes. For the most part, when I travel, I like shorter brushes so that they fit in this tote. You know, they fit here. They don't go, go up over the top. I like kind of having a variety, including sort of scrubby old icky ones because you never know what you need. I also love this. This is like my gourmet brush. This is by Paulina Bright. You can look up her brushes online. It's um, synthetic fiber. It holds so much water, for, especially for watercolor. You can get it wet and get a little pigment on the tip and you can paint forever. And this is now my used one. And then I have a newer one that I use here at home. So this one lives in, with my travel kit. Brushes that have paint on the wood part, like this one, the paint starts to flake off. So I'm trying to switch myself to brushes that are acrylic and plastic and rubber. I love these. So I, I just buy kits of these, then I have my gourmet brush, and then I have sort of scrubby, crappy brushes. So I just grab an assortment. If I have something specific that I'm thinking of, I might add to it, but I, ha I have a lot of brushes, as any painter does, and I just sort of grab a sample of them. In here, my viewfinder. I have another video that shows how I use this viewfinder. You line it up to make to your page to make sure that it's about the right, the same dimension as your page, and then you use it to frame your work, your your composition, what you're planning to do. And then um, I take a photo through the viewfinder hole with my phone to kind of remember what my plan was. Or you can use it and kind of hold it up and do your thumbnail sketches. And um, so that's that viewfinder. Um, washi tape. I've started using washi tape more than any other kind of tape. I used to use white artist tape. And I don't like blue painter's tape. It's too sticky. So washi tape is usually between post-it note and blue painter's tape or artist tape. 
stickiness. Some brands are better than other brands. This is a Mr. Water Bottle, and the reason there's tape on it is because this dumb brand um, has these has their labels on the front, and you can't get it off, so I just put washi tape over the front, but I like it like that. So I just, I use this to wet my palette, mist my face, whatever is needed. And here I have emergency Altoids and emergency jelly beans, but also these are just great containers for everything, anything, erasers, Tylenol. And then, I already did this one. Okay, so I'm done with this. So now let me show you. So I have no idea where I got this box, but um, I just have a little shelf of all different sizes of boxes. I love, for watercolor, I love boxes with hinges because you can um, mix paints over here or clip, use one of your bullnose clips. Actually, that's what's missing in here. You know, and clip something here. They also have um, water wells that slip on to have your water here. But so um, you just get some lunchbox shaped box, or it could have the, the lid that is removable and you can put it underneath or, you know, put it in your purse or whatever while you're painting. So I'm going to put this in here so I don't forget. Uh, any pad or just loose pieces of paper, washi tape. This is a kit I haven't used yet, but it's great to use these little... Um, tablet colors and then this is the lid is a palette but I would probably use this as the, as the palette um this is a smaller spray bottle it doesn't have anything in it and it needs if I were leaving today I might put one of my uh, water brushes in these I wanted to show you this is from Ikea perfect size it's just the greatest size and they're really good brushes i don't think i've used this one they're they're really good they're stiff and soft they're synthetic you don't feel like you're ruining you know you're using expensive brushes in case you do mess something up or you forget to rinse them out properly and also uh, they do turn this is not ikea but it's the same kind of thing some reds and different colors, different blues will um, stain. So uh, just know that. That makes it hard sometimes when you're painting with white or a lighter color later. Um, you might not want to use a brush that has a, the stain of a previous color. So, so one, Ikea, cheap, good. And of course, Altoids. The bonus of this is that um, it smells nice. And then the only thing missing is the mechanical pencil. So um, this is how my kit would look. Actually, I think I would use the short one. So look how this all fits. Ta-da. And then you can use your handy dandy bandana. to just kind of wrap it, make sure it doesn't open in your bag. You know? Or put it inside a Ziploc baggie. Oops, well, you get the idea. But then see how tiny that is? It's like one of those hobo things that you stick on the end of a stick and carry over your shoulder. But I mean, really, you don't really need anything else except you're probably carrying a purse or a backpack or something and you would carry a water bottle and just make sure it's not um, flavored or iced tea, that it's actually water and then you could use that to paint. So look how tiny that is. And there's still room for jelly beans. And then, Here's the other one that I wanted to show you. This is, uh, you know, I was going through my colored pencils and I, I use them, I don't know if I've shown you already, but I have all my colored pencils in coffee mugs 
and these pencils are too short to fit in there so now I've they've moved into my travel kit and the reason I use a clear bag and not my blue Q bag is so that I can see the colors right away and in here I also have a regular pencil somewhere well there is oh there we go there's my little regular pencil with my little guy on it and a black pen <laughs> I know it's in here of a thin black pen there we go there they are a thin black pen and a thick black pen permanent and then in here of course a pencil sharpener and two different kinds of erasers and the, so the reason it's clear so I can just reach right in and grab what I need and um, this these are you know travelers notebook style little minis I forget what the style is called there's no book. Oh, this is passport, passport size. So you could paint like this, or you could paint like this, or you could, uh, this will fit these smaller spirals. So this is great. And it's TSA safe. Okay, and then the last thing, I have two more things to say about travel kits. So if you're flying, um, you should check the TSA requirements, but little tiny scissors are okay to go through your carry-on. I think it's four inches and it can't have a sharp tip. So um, it's basically kid scissors size. The other thing is about w the clothes you're wearing. And this is a, kind of a revelation for me in the last like two years. So what you wanna do when you're choosing um, hats and shirts and stuff is go for grays and very non-reflective because if you're sitting in the sunshine the sun is shining on you and then it's reflecting back at what you're working on so you want to you want to think about that when you pack your bag and I actually have a an apron that I that's the same as this it's kind of this sort of dark gray and um, it may seem like you know you're out out with your art friends and you want to wear your super pretty bright flowery thing but in fact you're changing your painting by reflecting whatever's on you whatever you're wearing as a tone onto your paper so if you can't if it's difficult to do gray or you don't want to do gray then maybe white because then you'll just re be reflecting back m more of the same color that's shining on you so um, that's the last thing. So, so I have this and I have a nice uh, gray apron with a big pocket in the front. And uh, if I know I'm going to be painting something that's big and important, then I will wear my grays. And that's it. So I hope this is helpful to you and um, gives you some ideas. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, if I skipped over anything... Let me know. If you have any additional tips, let me know. Thanks for watching.